You know, they say if you're planning for revenge, you should start by digging two graves. Hmm. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too, if you can wait and not be tired by waiting, or being lied about, don't be lies. So hey everyone, welcome back once again, new video coming at you. Now you might have guessed once again from the title of this piece as to what the sort of content is about. So first I'm going to explain a little bit of how it is I sort of came to really start pondering this. Then I'm going to give you some basic sort of anecdote, which the two will probably be the same, and then afterwards we're going to sort of explore the concept and um, we'll just wade through some questions as we find them. So the topic here is revenge and, well, the human dark side, I guess, right? That dangerous side to all of us. Now, I came to really giving this a lot of thought for a number of reasons. One has been which, um, in my continuing and evolving uh, efforts to get away from the sort of stale, old, anti-feminist, anti-SJW content, which is fine and fair for everyone producing, and it's just not really as entertaining or engaging as maybe I once found it to be. Well, I've been watching Jordan Peterson lectures, not so much the ones about free speech and how pronouns are, you know, this and that, but more um, his his psychoanalytic pieces. Now, once you get past his attempts to draw comparisons between Sleeping Beauty and Pinocchio and the story of Adam and Eve, you do find that there's a, a lot of very interesting insights, usually stemming from his interest in Carl Jung, which come out. Now, one of them is about being dangerous. You may have even seen this video before or heard him mention these sorts of things, but uh, he, along with a number of other psychoanalysts, philosophers, and, and other thinkers who have sort of come to study and follow as of late, oftentimes uh, remark upon not only the existence and sometimes the nature of our sort of darker sides, our, our negative emotions, our impulses and instincts to potentially be violent or aggressive or hostile that it's not only important to understand these natures but it's um, it's important to actually be in touch with them to have some connection familiar familiarity with them if for nothing more than the knowledge that it provides you in terms of what you're capable of as well as a form of mastery to it now nothing brings out a person's dark side more i would say than a thirst for some kind of revenge now, even if the, re if the revenge it can be against the single individual, or it can just be a genuine sense of malevolence, maybe leveled at the world at large, or particular aspects of it. Now, if you've followed me or my work, if you've maybe watched my evolving pallor over the last several months, you'll know that the last four months or so haven't really been the kindest to me. Uh, it took a lot of hits, and the hits kept coming, and they kept coming in such a way which I honestly, at one point, just, I found it remarkable uh, how perfectly well-timed they seemed to be. Starting in October, I lost, a, well, I lost a woman who had fallen in love with. Uh, somebody who played some nasty tricks, I'd say. Gave me every reason to believe she was a, a real deal, but then when it became clear that I wasn't just going to finance her lifestyle, she bounced. Well, that stung, and soon it f sort of fell to me to find something to take solace in, and one of the things I took solace in was my work. In fact, even that beautiful painting right back there. Before I moved it there, I had it hung above my desk, just to fill the blank wall space that was there, and whenever I'd start feeling like I was in an absolute pile of shit, I'd look up and I'd realize that I'd made a career out of thin air, and pulled this life out of nothing, and... They had gotten to a point where brilliant, brilliant artists, and I'm actually going to put a link to the creation of that painting as well as the creator's channel in the, in the description below. But to, to realize that I have people doing beautiful works of art for me as their own thanks for an appreciation for what it is I'd done. It was a wonderful feeling to really focus on the career. But then, as we all know, the drama train pulled in. The bandwagons began circling, and every motherfucker worth his, uh, well, <laughs> salt, as it was, uh, decided to try and make hay while the sun shined and virtue signal in their own special ways. Now, I'm not really even going to get into that drama, because that was sort of one multifaceted batch of horse shit that just sort of fell in my lap. 
I'll say again, I had absolutely fuck all to do with the content of what was going on and really wasn't even aware of it. All the same, it became my problem and my career began to suffer. So now out a girl in a career, I then sort of turned to my friends and I've got a good number of very good friends. Those being the ones at least um, in the real world for the most part. Unfortunately, then even two, one of my absolute best friends decided shortly thereafter, shortly after the loss of the heat and hot water and the loss of the dignity which came with that, that such was the right time to sort of turn and walk away. Fair enough, fine enough on their part. But suffice it to say, with all of these things crashing down, there came a genuine dread sense of malevolence that grew within me. And as one was like to do when they are oftentimes depressed and faced with a world of shit in the absence of a schedule or obligations, well, a depression sort of cycled up, and with it came the natural loss of appetite and the insomnia, which, if you know anything about these sorts of experiences, you know that insomnia and a loss of appetite generally only seem to make the depression you're facing which causes them worse. And it becomes a cycle, much like the cycle of self-loathing I described before. Now, as this happened, there were a number of nights, I believe it was after, I think it was day three of no real sleep, in which I found myself uh, really starting to lose my grip on things. I was still cognizant, still aware, still, uh, still with it in that sense. But usually later, later in the night, or early, early in the mornings, as one bled into the other, and sunlight began to creep through the city, reflecting off of whatever snow might be there filling my apartment with wretched, bright, white light that I simply couldn't shut my eyes hard enough not to see while attempting to sleep. In these really strange hours, I found myself going to very strange and dark places. Very dark places. Places in which my thoughts just first poured over the people, and the specific people, mostly here right in town who I was genuinely angry with, who had felt it, who had felt it slighted me and wronged me, and that my entire plight, my state of mind, the, the dilapidated overall course of my life was, was squarely on their shoulders. They were the catalysts, of course they were responsible. And what did I want to do? I wanted to make them pay. That's right, revenge started churning around in my mind. Now this is something that I hadn't genuinely thought of or felt in any sincere way in well over a decade. In fact, the last time I think I really genuinely encountered a, a, a hatred this deep um, and a desire to take action upon it was probably actually when I was a teenager after that best friend of mine, which I mentioned in a previous video, um, stole from my family home. Now even then, that was still a sort of uh, impotent rage, the impotent rage of, of an angry and confused teenager then. Now, 34 years old, well, the rage is a bit more refined, a bit more powerful and strident. Now I contended with this, tossed and turned in bed, paced around my apartment, and devised all manner of diabolical schemes in my head. And as I went over them and over them and over them, I felt more and more justified. And it was rather funny, thinking even just in the term dark side to consider the Star Wars reference implications that even using such a term has, there is a certain manner in which the sort of fall from grace, the, the sort of way in which a man or woman or person of any kind can, who is perfectly reasonable, perfectly peaceful and calm, tranquil and serene typically, with a happy disposition, a sunny attitude who loves other people. How it is even that person can find themselves thrust into such a dark and foreboding place that they're willing to sacrifice themselves and their own happiness, their own stability, simply to get back at who or what they feel is wrong with them. Now, as I poured over this over and over again, thankfully, I eventually passed out mostly due to exhaustion and a little bit of NyQuil, I believe. And waking up, I found myself feeling considerably better, especially once I got some food in me. And then I dedicated myself as best as I could to resetting this sleep cycle, so I was no longer going to sleep well after the sun was coming up, and then waking up as it was going down. 
I did this also by adjusting my diet. Now, side note, interesting little thing. If one does this trick where they fast for 24 hours, then wake up early, despite how little sleep they may have gotten, to force themselves to eat breakfast as they are so dreadfully hungry. And then follow at least this cycle of waking up early and eating breakfast. It does actually a pretty good job of resetting you. But that aside, once I was able to do that, it was an interesting thing because I still remembered in my mind that night or that morning in which the thoughts of hate and revenge and malevolence, of pure loathing, of, for lack of a better term, evil, uh, spun around endlessly in my head. Now, an ordinary person, a normal person, a sane, rational, intelligent person would acknowledge that this happened and would do their best to stay away from it. I suppose I'm not that person. As it was, after another week or so, perhaps a few, just a few days or a week, of, of pondering this out and thinking about it, and then also comparing that to the sorts of um, ideas about hate and malevolence, which one finds when uh, reading different uh, philosophy texts, or even just having conversations with intelligent people, I really began thinking more and more about it. And then the words of Jordan Peterson sort of came back to me. I'm paraphrasing here, of course, but he said something to the effect of it's important, if not vital, to understand your darker side, your dangerous side, to know how dangerous, in a sense, you can be, if only for the fact that you'll know how to defend yourself against people who might wish to do you harm, and the knowledge that you're capable of doing harm to others, especially if you refuse to take action on it, is essential knowledge to yourself, as it both allows you to have an understanding of uh, perhaps what your limits are, how far you can be pushed, but also at the same time giving you a firmer understanding of how best you can protect yourself. Now, as I thought more and more about this, the, the concept of rage, this malevolent hatred which I found stirring deep within me, which I for the most part ignored and for the most part didn't really spend too much time with, was something of a kind of undiscovered country for me. It was something which I realized that I hadn't maybe dedicated the necessary time and effort to really getting to fully understand. I've known for a long time that I am, as many people regard me, uh, can be somewhat of an angry guy. Well, and anger is an old friend of mine. It's a well-worn leather jacket. And when I pull it out of the closet and slip it on, it's like no time has passed since the last time I wore it. But this was different. And realizing that this was different and that it was something that I hadn't really explored that thoroughly, I performed a bit of an experiment. I sort of recreated the conditions, and by recreating the conditions I do mean the fact that I spent more time than was healthy thinking about things which are bothersome or painful, I made a point of not sleeping regularly, and my diet went back to being absolute shit. Now, it didn't take long, about a day, day and a half, until I found myself sort of once again in that same place, filled and brimming with rage and hate and just genuine vitriolic malevolence. Now, less of a rifle and more of a scatter shotgun in the sense of that anything was, anything before me, anything I encountered was enough to, to, to draw the rage and iron fury from me and I would direct it all right there. But it was interesting this time because I remembered as I was going into this, that this was intentional. I was doing this to myself for the purposes of understanding this thing. Now, maybe it was just by virtue of understanding that there was a mix of sort of uh, you know, predetermined sort of mood mixed with neurochemicals, which is oftentimes what those who are facing depression or rage issues will remind themselves of, that it's not actually them per se, assuming there's a them or they're assuming there's a self outside of one's actions and impulses, but that it's a, it was simply a sort of a neurochemical trick. But as I continued exploring it, the depths to which I found this sort of nastiness could go were rather surprising, at least in my own head. You know, the ability to rationalize and justify horrible things to myself as being completely valid and just, simply based on that sense of, of hate that was welling inside of me. The abilities I found to justify and rationalize really anything that I wanted rooting it solely in sort of my emotional reactions to the situations that I was dwelling on, 
It seemed, in many senses, to know no bounds. Now, one of the few things which did give me cause to realize that there are limits and depths to how far this sort of hatred can go, at least within myself, came by way of reading Charles Bukowski. And I'll say this now, if you're depressed or feeling misanthropic, read some Bukowski, and you'll see that as bad as you feel you can be, you've still got a long way to go. I actually do look back on this time, as painful as it was, and as unfortunate and messy as it proved to be, even though fortunately no action on any of these ideas that I had really taken. I can't help but look back on this experiment of mine and see this intrinsic value, which I, frankly, for one, would not give up for anything. Now, there are some people out there who are, let's say, perhaps less controlled. Some folks whose immediate responses to things are violence and aggression, hostility. Now, this could be simply a matter of their own sort of uh, darker natures being a little too powerful for them to control, or it could be a simple matter of them just being a person of relatively simple mind, one to whom the answer to all problems and questions they're confronted with is violence and aggression. But all the same, with these same people, perhaps, I would say that the necessity for somebody to take the time to really explore and get to know and understand the darkness that lives within them and how bad they can actually be is an essential part not only to fully understanding oneself, but to really understanding what the goodness within them actually means. Is a person who, let's say, would be capable of mass murder or arson or some terrible crime Somebody who's capable of it but never commits it. Is the person who is capable of something but never commits it based on, I guess, perhaps, call it choice? Even though we know that that whole concept is kind of up in the air with me. But let's say that somebody is like that. Are they, in a sense, more virtuous than the people who are simply incapable somehow of these things? People whose um, better natures perhaps are too overriding or too overbearing, or perhaps they just don't have that kind of malevolence in them. Is there a greater virtue to being a sort of uh, naturally good person? Or is one who strives to be good in light of impulses to be otherwise more admirable in this sense? Now, within all of this, I think the most important takeaway, I would say, is that if you find yourself oftentimes confronted with a boiling rage, feelings of hatred, feelings of anger, fury, which you oftentimes can't necessarily control. I have to wonder, personally, and again, I'm no psychoanalyst or anything like this, but I wonder to myself that perhaps that's not actually more of a matter of not entirely understanding the nature of that particular beast. Is that the understanding that one's uh, darker sides um, will emerge in certain times and propel one to think or act in certain ways if perhaps the inability of some people to control or resist this, in a sense, doesn't stem more from a desire simply to be away from it. Now, in the studying of these philosophies, oftentimes, you'll find a lot of different takes. There are some who think that it's entirely healthy and necessary for one to explore and understand these aspects of themselves, and to incorporate that into their personality so that these parts can be managed and perhaps even utilized in the course of one's life as they were required. And then other philosophies, other ideas, other schools of thought seem to think almost that the best way to deal with these things is to simply acknowledge that they're there and then turn around and expend even greater energy embracing what is effectively their antithesis. As with always, I'm typically of the sort of belief that it really depends on the individual, what works best for them. I know for me, since really taking the time to understand my rage, to understanding how deep that particular rabbit hole can go, my understanding of it and a more to total, or maybe I get, dare say holistic sort of sense, um, is such that I actually feel more confident in my management of it going forward. Now with the concept of revenge however, and that was part and parcel of this video itself, I will say that much like the sorts of actions one might come to daydream, fantasize, or think of in the course of their own tussles with the darker aspects of their nature, it's important, if nothing else, to remember the cost-benefit analysis side to such things never really weighs out in the sort of favorable outcome that one might otherwise desire. 
Now, granted, most people who go out for legitimate revenge have already sort of written themselves and their futures off when they commit to it. The notion of digging two graves is not just something they accept, it's something they're perfectly fine with. Oftentimes, revenge, in one form or another, is an attempt to bring somebody down with the or at least with an absence of concern over oneself, willing to so totally self-destruct in the process. Now this, I believe in a sense, is sort of just mirroring the process that it takes for one to get there. The destruction of oneself, the destruction of one's own ambitions and hopes, their, uh, even just their senses of self-respect, are oftentimes sort of preconditions to people going that far and that deep. You cease caring what kind of person you are. You cease caring if any of your actions will have any altogether positive or beneficial outcomes. You are simply a sort of a cat being swung by its own tail in this sense. You are a slave to your passions and a slave to your poisons. With these sorts of things, again, I'm tempted to guess that just as one who perhaps is a pushover, one who is a doormat, unable to really defend themselves in any case, and uh, unwilling to do so even if the opportunity presented itself, just as this might be an issue for the weak in that they don't know the strength of their own inner darkness, that perhaps this is more a matter of people not entirely understanding the nature of it, and therefore succumbing to its wiles and whims and wills, while themselves being lost in the process and feeling entirely just and valid. If, in these cases, perhaps, people who are able to have a more solid understanding of these primal sorts of urges and emotions which can rise up, sometimes in the blink of an eye, depending on circumstance, I, I can't help but wonder if perhaps they might have not been able to manage these things better. So I guess that's really kind of it for me right now on this topic. If the takeaway is to be anything, it's to be... It's that one should not be so much afraid of the uglier sides of their own psyche or personality, as much as one should take every effort they can to become intimately aware of and familiar with them. It's only things that we know that we can ever hope to really control. And furthermore than that, if nothing else, maybe it'll serve as a reminder of what the virtue to your own human goodness really is. So a thank you to all uh, remaining um, subscribers, those who are sticking around. Channel is still bleeding quite a bit, but I know there's a hardcore there. And you guys, well, I appreciate you sticking with me. To all of my supporters on Patreon and Maker Support, to those who use the PayPal, to those who enjoy just sending me odd things such as this curious tube that I received in my P.O. box recently. I wonder what it could be. Well, to all of you, thank you incredibly for your support and for your continued patronage and support of my work. It means a lot and oftentimes it genuinely keeps me going. So I'd like to know your thoughts on this. Uh, is it best to really get to fully know the ugly bad side, the bad guy that lives within you, the villain who you carry around inside, maybe in the back of your mind, or is it best to simply keep that individual sort of under lock and key? Have you experienced times in which uh, you've found some sort of surprising and moving insight as to yourself or people in general by virtue of simply pouring over and experiencing and sitting and perhaps stewing in a sense of rage of your own? Have you ever taken revenge? And if so, how did it work out? As always, leave a like if you liked this video, dislike if you didn't, hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed now, and hit the bell if it's not marked, although who knows if that's even going to work. Otherwise, you can catch me as usual Thursday nights over on Twitch for the Midweek Saints show and then Sunday nights over at the YouTube Saints channel, both linked down below, for some good sort of late night style comedy. It's a nice breather to get away from things such as philosophy or pop politics or the inane screeching that we oftentimes are uh, sort of presented with as whatever the replacement for the public intellectual of our modern age proves to be. All that being the case. Thank you all for sticking around, and I will see you in the next video in probably a couple of days. Bye. Wait, see? I'm getting better. You're, you're welcome to show yourselves out. Ah. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, if you can
can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting, or being lied about, don't deal in lies, or being hated, don't give way to hating. If you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same, if you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, or watch the things you gave your life to broken and stoop and build them up with worn out tools. If you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss, and lose and start again in your beginnings and never bring a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sing to serve your turn long after they're gone and so hold on when there's nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on.